Rumi Suchihashi, welcome to the Lyle podcast. It's such an honor to have you here. We meet regularly on Zoom, which is an honor and privilege of mine. Um, I think today even might be part of the one year anniversary from when we met at a writer's conference, um, which was such a special time. And I'm just so glad that you're in my life and I'm so glad you're here today. Thank you, Al. I think so too. I was looking at um, the pictures on my phone. It was telling me where I was a year ago. And there I was in Santa Fe. Santa Fe, I know. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, let's just get right into it. Yes. Um, so first question is, how would you describe your work and vocation? I am an author of two books. Uh, I want to remember this is my first book and it was a monumental very very tiny book it's only four by six inches um, large mm -hmm. and has 60 pages and to me it was an awakening of how life changes actually happen in the tiniest, most radical moments. Mm. And so I have since then really become a champion of major life changes through paying attention in a really tiny, immediate way. And that has a lot to do with, um, I'm sure we'll have a lot to do with the conversation that we have today. Um, wow. Uh, I mean, not wow, because you do this all the time. You know, we meet um, twice a month, uh, essentially, and you just have a way with words. So uh, you're in a wonderful profession uh, for your gifting and capacity. I'm really intrigued by the that phraseology that ch the champion of life changes. How did you come about that or yeah I I I was always that I just never claimed it uh -huh. I, um I remember in my 20s uh, the first time there was a glimmer of oh author this is a thing that people do I've loved books all my life but somehow did not really think of authors as flesh and blood people mm, oh, interesting and they're the flesh and blood people sitting down to do the work of putting their ideas and thoughts inside of them onto the page letting somebody read it refining it collating it then putting it out into the world that the human touch and all of that had somehow been opaque to me um, until I was in a um, urban outfitters store in my neighborhood. <laughs> okay. And their gift section at their, uh, I noticed that they had like picture books for grownups, like small little picture books. And, and this one was called The Art of Doing Nothing. Uh huh. And like something inside me just really woke up first, just the idea of picture book for grownups, that was kind of radical. Like, yeah. oh, we don't, important things don't have to come in giant like, mm. five point font, single spaced thousand page books. Mm -hmm. It can be packaged into something joyful and mm -hmm. small that you that's enjoyable to hold in your hands and just the radical notion of the art of doing nothing that you could make mm -hmm. doing nothing an art. <laughs> the title itself just really grabbed me. And the combination of all those experiences was for me like, Oh, this, this is a thing. This is a thing that I feel a tug towards. Mm. Um. And maybe in that art of doing nothing, the way it struck me was I had, well, not long before that moment, 
um, I had an experience of being, I, I had a, a, a job in a large tech corporation at the time. And one morning I happened to bring some basic grocery store flowers, a bouquet to the office with me on a Monday morning. And after I checked my emails, I, I took those flowers and um, arranged them into a vase mm. at my desk. And then I felt eyes on me. And I looked up to see one of my coworkers just like staring at me wide eyed. And <laughs> she said, Rumi, you sure know how to stop and smell the roses. And I didn't know if that was a jab or a compliment mm. because sure. mm-hmm. knowing the person I, I, it, I was safe to assume that it was a compliment. Her eyes were glittery in a genuinely ad- admiring way, but something about the setting, the type of day, just we're here to do a job and be productive. Right. And right. the fact that I, I felt caught mm-hmm. being completely immersed in my joy of, making these modest little flowers look beautiful Mm -hmm. and letting the world fall away and just being with it. And so I think there was a self-consciousness that, that I was suddenly hyper aware that I am like this and not everybody is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't experience that kind of immersion and quiet joy in any part of my job. Mm. And that inner knowing was sort of, but this is this. I was I was had a respectable job that mm-hmm. my parents were proud of, and if everybody could see that I was on the path to success in that job, even though I wasn't feeling that experience, so it became a little secret that I was carrying inside myself. And and then I found the book, and it lit something further. There was another. Wait a minute. There's mm-hmm. feeling. Wait a minute, in a good way, like maybe there's more to me, more to what constitutes work. Yes. Than I've allowed myself to believe. Mm. So I think having had that experience, I became even more of a champion for people who feel that they have to be themselves very, very Mm part-time in Mm -hmm. in their own little private corner of their world. Mm -hmm. They maybe, if they're lucky, have a little sliver where they get to be themselves. And the rest of the time, you rent yourself out to the world to be the version of you that everybody else wants you to be. Mm Mm-hmm. And yeah, wants or needs, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, wants or needs, demands you. Demands, to, right, yeah. <clears throat> um, and so it's been a very long, decades-long, quiet evolution of flipping that narrative mm-hmm. from the world demands this of me. My survival depends on me meeting these demands Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. somehow I'm not supposed to forget who I really am that I am like one one thirty second of my life Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and feel the friction between the little pole the kind of person who feels elated at arranging flowers who feels elated at holding a tiny (laughs) book picture book for adults called the art of doing nothing that that me gets gets to thrive in a world that seems enamored with doing an outward success and the opposite of nothing having doing making showing Mm. so um Maybe that being yourself is not the same. The the tension, the details of the tension, I think, are different from person to person. Mm-hmm. 
but the struggle, the more I looked around, started to feel universal. So, um, yeah, so I've evolved into this place of claiming now that that's what I champion. Mm -hmm. And when I look back, that the fact that the part of me that feels true didn't Mm -hmm. die didn't happen because of big decisions or big things it felt it it was possible because of the tiny things I decided to Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. hold on to or made an effort not to forget completely Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. did that um, Because even that language is there, it's like holding on to or, you know, make an effort not to forget. Is there also like an an elevation of those in percentage of time you give, like how much energy you give? Um, And and even relating it back to the word you say, you're a champion. Did you, it's seeming to me like to be like a champion of these life changes is like, there was this work, these small changes of even championing yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I thought that change came from doing big things. Mm -hmm. So some of the, the, the tiny things is where I eventually landed in the beginning. I thought I, I bought into the idea you hear about people who quit quit their jobs and mm-hmm. go for it and they grit their way and make it big in the arts. Mm-hmm. And, and that that's really, if if you're serious, that's what it looks like. Yes, yeah. And that path is not always available to people. Mm-hmm. It's available for and it is not just a matter, measure of courage. There are mm-hmm. a lot of forces that make that difficult, legitimately hard. Um, and so not being able to do that for a long time, I think I, I would sign up for programs or certifications or th- things that I thought would give me a sense of permission to be who I was mm-hmm. and constantly bite off more than I could chew. Mm-hmm. And then I couldn't follow through. Mm-hmm. And then I'd feel bad. And then mm-hmm. I would respond to feeling bad by the well, last time I signed up for a thing that was supposed to last 30 days. I'm going to sign up for a thing that lasts a year. <laughs> <laughs> um, so mostly I came about the um, tiny after making myself miserable mm-hmm. and the culmination of shame like oh I I talk about being a writer more than I actually do it Mm -hmm. and that that's sort of the path of okay I'll sign up for something bigger 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 Mm -hmm. and um somewhere along the way I realized that there is a thing called the story I'm telling myself meaning the perception of my experience Mm -hmm. and how that um, I don't have I can't control the forces it outside of my life that make it difficult to stay committed to a regimented year-long program say Mm But I I can always look upon the story I tell myself about that experience with more compassion and kindness. Mm. And that's the moment when I actually learn something from that experience and can grow. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. So I made peace with all of those experiences, failing bigger. Mm -hmm when I realized that, oh, the real growth comes from looking at it with curiosity, like, well, well, how did that feel? Mm -hmm. What was that like? What had I hoped for? Mm -hmm. What did I take upon my, um, take on as my responsibility 
when I never had control over mm. something in my environment. Mm-hmm. And underneath all of that, if I peeled all the layers, it all came down to permission. Mm. That somehow I needed somebody else to make it okay for me to mm-hmm. be myself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. And when I just, and so then the focus really became more about, well, how do I feel about me? Mm-hmm. I don't feel right about me. What's going on? Mm-hmm. Who's, who's voice am I being influenced by Mm -hmm. and is what I care about the same as what I'm asked to care about or make important Mm -hmm. do I even need these outward measures of success that I think when the world says I'm a worthy person when I have whatever measure of success under me then I get to be who I am right yeah yeah Mm -hmm. But I'll never get there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're just in this uh, culture that just is trying to force us into a mold or or we're a cog or a wheel, you know, part in a big machine or, you know, and there's so many different institutions that we're, you know, part of and we have our role, whether it's, you know, family um, or, you know, a religious institution or volunteering or, um, community or place that we, um, are employed that if we don't do anything about it is just Mm -hmm. really dictating, um, where we're moving. I'm thinking kind of like a, um, I don't, I don't know enough about it, but I'm thinking about a sale, so I can't, but it, it doesn't matter, I guess, where I'm using the right terminology, but there's sales that like allow you to catch wind and then there's, um, sales and then your rudder that like helps with directions and we're of course influenced by our environment, but like you're mentioning, we can't, there's many things in our environment and our past or current situation or future that we won't be able to change or control. But within that, there are so many things that we can. And oh, yeah, I, I just love how you're just presenting of your own experience, something that to me is universal that we all um have this this gift to give and that's that's a big you're you're touching on this question a lot more than a lot of people will go into and it's it's intentional that I say you know your work or vocation I don't say career I don't say employment with the and I don't usually talk about it I don't even prep people ahead of time I just want to see how they answer but it's really kind of a bit about like what do you think life is about like what are you showing up in life uh, to do. And I love how you've just brought, again, from your own experience, something that we can all relate to about what is in me to give and am I going to take the steps to do it? And I have, you know, so many quotes from you tucked around from our times (laughs) and I'm looking at this post-it, um, it relates of course, in some way, we'll see how directly, but you say, (laughs) <laughs> it's all in the service of our heart making it to the page. And I think that relates to what you're describing is like all this effort that you're doing, it's taking, you're like really having to, you're having your own experience and then you're reflecting on your experience. And then you're also, I think we didn't really talk about it, but then you're reflecting on your impact in the world. Uh, and how you're presenting yourself and that this is a gift that you have to give, like you're writing, right? So it's all in the service of our heart, making it to the page. And there's just this really, to me, when you say the heart, this is like, this is, I'm going to bring my authentic self to my writing, which is this gift that I have. And of course you have so many other gifts, whether it's 
arranging a bouquet that, you know, a coworker is just going to be like, whoa, just witnessing that process and um, like your impact on them. Um, ah, but so beautiful uh, what you're sharing. So beautiful. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the heart. Um, it's all on the surface of the heart, making it to the page. Um, to me, that uh, people ask a lot of questions about the craft of writing. How do you get good at it? Mm-hmm. How do you make it work? Yeah. And um, what works is. Yes, there are techniques. There are ways in which you arrange a language that have an impact. But all all of those things are only animated by your beating heart. (laughs) What's Mm. what's in it? Mm -hmm. All the techniques in the world could not bring a tear to someone's Mm -hmm. eyes, and Mm -hmm. I think. There's something so so simply life-giving when someone's words on a page make us either laugh or cry or both. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And to me, the, the 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 beauty of the written word it is it's just that there's there's this beautiful proxy in between people that's making our separate but together lives Mm -hmm. feel connected Mm -hmm. and alive and just just a little bit more meaningful yeah yeah um that's so true and and whenever i talk to you there's always this kindred and it just feels like uh, um yeah, I'm thinking of uh, what you're saying is it's so true. This the contrast. What I'm hearing is between um, our aloneness and our togetherness, and like mm-hmm. that that is what marks so much of our lives. And I I met with a new friend yesterday, um, and he uh, was sharing a song that he had never played for anybody else. And it was about this new love. And it's all about like, is it too soon? Like, should I be feeling this way? Right. And, you know, we're just it's Los Angeles. It's a lovely day, you know, and you're just sitting in a park and I'm like, wow, just to like behold this, somebody sharing something that's so special to this person. And, even questioning it, like it hasn't even been shared with the person it was written for. This tender love song, and it's in in that crux time of will I share it with this person? Like, will I be brave enough to to share my heart? And it, as they were playing it and singing it, I was just like, whoa! And all of a sudden, I felt this amazing connection to him. And then there was like crazy level because when I first um, met my partner I wrote a song within I wrote like three love songs like within the first two months and then I had written a song that was literally called too soon and you know and then I was able to share that and we had this connect you know we had our unique experiences and then I followed up his song with you know the lyrics to my song you know is it too soon you know to want to grow old with you is like the the first like line in the lyric. And um, so all that to say, just what <laughs> I just resonates so much with what you're saying of how we have these solitary lives that at times, um, and this is my words, but um, where we can feel like lonely and we can feel like, do I belong? And am I okay? And can I share this? And I'm so grateful that you're in the world sharing your writing, because I do believe there is such a power um, in whatever art is and the the medium of writing being an extremely, I mean, 
I, who knows how many books have been written or essays or poems, but how, or songs, like how many, yeah, just like, that's just, an, I would be like, whoa, you know, is it billions? What are we talking about? Like, there's how many trillions? I don't know. Like how, how many of these, and then just how, what's the ripple effect that happened because of that? And then the particular type of writing that like my friend shared yesterday and the, the kind, which is the kind of writing that you do, that's very uh, sacred and intimate and comes out of presence with yourself is just like, to me, like the, like the ultimate or like the pit, epitome of, of writing, but oh my gosh, it's so scary to do that kind of work. <laughs> <laughs> and that, um, it's so terrifying. If I'd had any flair for fiction, I would probably write that instead. Yeah. I I just came with like a mandate to write from my own experience and yeah. and and not big sweeping sagas. Yeah. But like very in the moment, almost mundane, tiny, tiny experiences is what keeps being asked to show up on the page mm -hmm. and so I I try to be faithful to it yes when I'm not it does feel overwrought and wrong and then mm -hmm. I have to fa face mm -hmm. that and strip yeah. it back down yeah yeah mandate that's a I like that word for like a calling or that like oh yeah we, we only have so many choices right when we really listen yes. it's like um but I do believe you can tell me if this is not your experience that you really enjoy it oh absolutely yeah which I, is I did when it more. comes out well to um tell me more of your say, experience yeah. say, yeah. say more about the mandate part yeah. I think when I've enjoyed it it's it's when I felt like I I found a current yeah. And I just flowed with it and yeah. the words came and yeah. it wasn't efforted. Yeah. And then there it was. And I look at it and go, oh, right, that that sounds about right. That yeah. sounds pretty good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, yes. I, I am not, I don't know how to surf, but I've had a chance to do um, some boogie boarding before nice. so it's all nice and so it's like the baby version <laughs> yeah 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 and Same. but I've yeah. done that enough to know the difference between awkwardly riding along on the wave and actually catching it at the moment and being carried in mm -hmm. and it is that sort of carried in synchronicity sensation that um and it's a very embodied experience when mm -hmm. The writing comes and and I guess that there is a little bit of like that surfer's high of when you've tasted that like oh that's what's possible and exactly yeah but the rest of the time you're you're in the water bobbing up and down going is this the one no nope, no nope. and sometimes you end up with sand in your mouth and try again and and it's a lot more sand in your mouth than catching the waves mm -hmm. and if you try too hard you it works less and yes. so there's a whole yes 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 there's so much um what I hear you saying is um that there's so much wisdom in it right that um, maybe there's a simplicity of um and these are not my words maybe like a simplicity of like you need to open yourself up to but then there's a complexity of well how do I open myself up to what yes. needs to happen maybe there's some work that you have to do to like get rid of some blockages or maybe you have to calm yourself because you're too you're trying to conjure a wave to come and you can't make a wave happen in the sea right or no you, you can't control and you might say well this is the timing right now but anybody that is in the ocean know that sets can be erratic you know and there could be sneaker right. waves and all these things and so. absolutely uh, when we were talking earlier about um, con trying to control things in the environment or control something to meet an expectation that you feel is imposed on you, and you 
you were careful not to use the word career Mm -hmm. so much to describe the work. And I wanted to follow up on that because I think one of the challenges I had until I landed on this tiny concept is always needing to have a solid identity. Mm -hmm. I am, I am this. Mm -hmm. And if I, this is my identity. And based on this identity, there's an expected trajectory. I will accomplish this within this amount of time. And then once I accomplish that, my lifestyle will look like this and my income will look like this and my influence will look like this. And, and you're supposed to have the belief Mm -hmm. that I was, I was answerable to that. Yeah. for myself and other people. And if I was not answerable to that, I was a flip. Mm-hmm. So uh, that has probably been the, the, the most debilitating central belief that mm-hmm. I've carried. And um, it just a couple days ago, I read a little um, just a snippet of a conversation about Buddhism Mm -hmm. that relates to this. And this person was talking about uh, the concept of the, the, the middle way Mm -hmm. in Buddhism, which is generally understood. It's compared to, um, to doing things in in moderation. So avoid the extremes, um, which is not untrue. But something that was in this conversation, it, what it means it, is that when we, again, the going back to the, like, biting off these, these big, big dreams, it, I was constantly putting myself in these huge pendulum swings. Mm. I'm depressed. I'm going to go for it. I'm depressed. I'm going to go for it. Mm-hmm. I can't be a writer. I'm going to be all the things Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's how I manage the tension and to come to the middle road is to avoid either extreme Mm -hmm. but um it's not just about doing things that like make your goal moderate Mm -hmm. It, it was about stopping striving for solidity at all and to learn that the pendulum is life mm-hmm. and to in, mm-hmm. learn to enjoy the constant shifts and changes. Mm-hmm. And the idea that um, mm-hmm. change is the only constant and mm-hmm. we, and we don't mm-hmm. want it. And to surrender to the dynamism mm-hmm. of change with a kind of open, accepting heart. Mm-hmm. I had never thought of, oh, if you're in the middle road and avoid the extremes, the pendulum swing gets to be interesting. Mm-hmm. And if I'm just sort of swinging in there, looking at what it, and I'm swinging little, a little bit mm-hmm. and thinking about, well, how did I put my heart on the page today? Mm-hmm. That's. That's all there is. Mm -hmm. I can't guarantee what will happen tomorrow. Mm -hmm. My my influence, I I can do the things, the internal work to keep me from going to the Mm -hmm. far extremes and learn to enjoy the change Mm -hmm. and pay attention. Do they put mm-hmm. my heart on the page mm-hmm. and learn to call that a life mm-hmm. instead of the, mm-hmm. the 20 year plan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I having a little internal giggle to myself because when the decade came right, 2010, like I'm just remembering yeah. like all over social media, people talking about like their 10 year plan. This is going to be the best decade da 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 and then yeah right and then three months later we're like locked down in a pandemic yeah. and it's like oh are we okay and then how you know how things have been going since then like how how little we know about where life is gonna take us in part in spite of our uh intentions 
such yes. great, such great wisdom there. And there is that I'm hearing like that, that steadiness, uh, even, you know, so pendulum is an imagery or like a sign, sign you sold a wave, like up and down yeah. that they cancel each other out and kind of this like through line, which we've talked about before. I think we talked about it in the context, not on the podcast, but you and I yeah. in the context of play, you know, yes. or maybe, you know, maybe I'm not consistent with that, but can I, through a discipline, can I balance things out? And that's, um, I think you're saying like a lot of things you say, I think you're saying a lot of things <laughs> in your words. Um, and that's something that I'm getting from that is like the, that, well, I'm going to show up. My discipline is going to, um, it's going to be more artful, but the day to day is going to look like that I'm showing up and writing, yes. Yes. but maybe, you know, my moods or emotions or my intentions you know, one day it might just be like, oh my God, I guess I'm going to show, you know, it might just be like that you're dragging yourself out of bed or like, oh my God, how many cups of coffee or tea do I need to have, you know, in order to yes. get myself to sit down to do this. And there's other days where you're like hopping with all these ideas and you're just, you're aware of your potential. Um, but those really aren't, don't equal that out put you know it could be a day that you're very was very hard to sit at the computer or notepad like however you're writing or dictating like however you're writing the mood doesn't really dictate it but there is like that discipline which we know if we go back to wisdom like has to do with like your presence and but presence yes. isn't just like okay how do I feel in that moment but Right. Kind of broad, broader, broader. It's true. Um, earlier this year, um, I was having problems with my vision. And there was mm -hmm. a period of time where um, I couldn't look at a computer for more than an hour a day or sometimes even less. And I got really panicked, like how mm -hmm. all my work happens through a computer yeah. and even handwriting on the page, just tracking the movement became really difficult. And um, I had been on a streak with a group of storytellers of, of showing up and telling a certain amount of stories every week. And I decided that I could tolerate um, looking at my phone long enough to voice record mm. my story. So I'd open up the, the notes app on my iPhone and, and I just dictated like quite literally what was happening, how I felt about being a writer that day and how discombobulated I felt in the middle of being discombobulated, uh, not to gross people out. I'm sorry if people are listening <laughs> are, are grossed out by a animal things, but <laughs> as I'm trying to do this, I hear the cat hacking up and then she, I the dog is right behind her trying to eat what she hacked up. It's just mm -hmm. and I feel like I am just uh, turned inside out myself. And yes. I record this whole story and I share it with people. And it turned into some of the most honest writing. Like people were really responding to the play, like, wow, there's this strip down version of writer Rumi is pretty great like mm. this story <laughs> about and and so the our best work doesn't necessarily come from having the best conditions yeah yeah mm -hmm. best meaning was my heart on the page mm -hmm. in a way that someone could receive it as a gift yes and such a gift such a gift it is right uh, hmm. the overwrought beautifully turned phrase has its place mm -hmm. but it won't have that same level of raw honesty mm -hmm. so yeah 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 we're already going there um but what do you think it means to live your healthiest life oh Mm, what it means to live your healthiest life is 
to live life by your own measure Mm. and to me that's being really aware of the things that make you go ooh. Mm, tell me more about that let, let you just say that made me go yeah it, uh, it could be something so silly to someone so for me like the the arranging daisies or whatever it was i was dazing uh, um, back when i my 20 in my 20s that was that was if i were to utter make an utterance of my feelings it was a very ooh, mm. very immersed in the the tactical beauty mm-hmm. when I hear someone say something beautiful I also have that ooh response mm. um and usually it's 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 that and can that be enough mm-hmm. I That's I feel fun. like the opposite of health is being so preoccupied that you're missing the ooh that's right in front of you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. So I don't, I hope not to miss mm-hmm. oohs mm-hmm. <laughs> as I'm mm-hmm. alive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and that um, parallels my experience. I I believe that to be true. That also, um, I think, is found in a lot of like wisdom literature of like the power of like wonder or beauty um, and our need for that, and which relates to art. You know, like why we need art, but even just like the yeah, like whatever the flowers are or um, the experience of a textile, you know, like a clothing, like whatever the sense, you know, or that smell of whatever it is, it's finally fall now here in a little bit in Los Angeles feels like, okay, maybe we can celebrate. We're not in the hundreds anymore, but like the, um, so we can get into the pumpkin spices and the maple or things that feel, or the apple, you know, the thing that in North America, we really in the northern part of North America, we really like identify with fall and like the changing of leaves and those like smell and those colors. But whatever, I love how concisely you're able to say that the ooh. And I, children come by that very honestly. And it seems like most adults have lost that. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a lot about the world and when I look at like issues in our country and our communities and the global landscapes and environment, I think, yeah, if we were going, noticing what made us go, ooh, like it wouldn't be, but I think there's so many levels of people being so far attached from that and so into these things that are mechanized to accumulate and uh um whether it's yeah like some of the things you're describing that would be associated maybe with a career or climbing the ladder uh retirement you know houses uh goods um all these kind of things that we're really missing it it's like well i'm going to work so hard so that i can retire early or retire whenever or retire in this way versus like learning a way to go through life because somehow it's like that's like the american dream right like you're always paying it towards this like future which we've talked about that the future isn't guaranteed and and what are we giving up in the meantime? Like, what is happening to our health? You know, what is happening to our blood pressure? Like, how many neuroses are we developing? How are we breathing? Um, in my background in physical therapy, 
it just seems more and more prevalent. And I'm just like, is it just that I wasn't aware in my younger years? But if I'm going to help somebody neck, shoulder, like chest, upper back, arms, but it's not even just that. It's a really like the whole body, like we need, but even back pain, like we have to talk about breathing and it's my, it's appalling. You know, I'm like making big like hand gestures for people, like my brain's blowing up about like the number of people that don't know how to take a breath from their diaphragm or from their belly. And we spend time on that and they're just, and it's, and it mirrors a lot of what I see in life where, is, where you're like, okay, so my belly is supposed to go out when I breathe. Okay. I'm going to push my breath, <laughs> my belly out. And it's like, no, 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 no. It's the breath. It's the air <laughs> coming into your lungs that is supposed to do that. And that's just a product and manifestation of when we're anxious, right? We breathe up higher. And if, and we're, if we're just so people are just so disconnected from their bodies. We are so, it's so hard. And so I love that just, well, health is, ooh. Um, This coincided, I think, so I moved to California 2010. And my first time is not, my first time once I lived in California going to Yosemite was in 2012. So two years later, a year and a half later. And I started and then I was just like, this is going to be a regular thing for me. And why? Because I would get deep within these massive trees and you're up, you know, in the Pacific Northwest, you know, about massive trees. Right. But like the, I just found this phenomena of like, all of a sudden it wasn't a conscious thing, but all of a sudden I would just be like, And then I was like, whoa, when, like, and I had this reflection, you know, you talk about like the perception of your experience. I had the experience of taking the breath. And then I had this realization, like, whoa, that felt really different. Like why, what just happened? Have I, how long have I been holding my breath? Like why? um, So good. Missing the ooh. Oh, yeah. I mean, what you described is the kind of tiny level, massive life changes that I am now obsessed with talking about and writing about and championing because that's that's the level of oh breath, like really not not just because the yoga teacher told you to, but oh breath. Um, you know, all health and eating mm-hmm. are often linked. And mm-hmm. but what about yum? Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, like uh, yum, like the actual savoring of what's mm-hmm. in your mouth. Mm-hmm. Um, the, that's. It seems so so basic. Mm-hmm. But that's the level, you know, that is what we we have influence over 100% of the time, regardless of our body's abilities. Mm-hmm. Um, we can be aware of the, the, the yum or the ooh that's past, mm. that's in front of us. And to be preoccupied by, am I healthy to the Mm -hmm. point where those moments are passing by feels tragic to me. Yes. Yes. I remember being in my twenties, um, maybe 20 literally. And, Oh, I'm going to eat healthy. And it was just like my version of disordered eating. (laughs) And I remember just having breakfast of all brand, you know, that's that mm-hmm. quote unquote cereal. I mean, it does have sugar in it, but it's, you know, it's kind of like shredded cardboard and plain yogurt, low fat, like not even like, I mean, I have plain yogurt right now in my, but it's, it's all the fats in there, <laughs> but like, like plain yogurt. And that was, that was breakfast. 
like there wasn't even any like fruit or cinnamon or any spices. It was like that. And I don't know like how many months like I did that for like this kind of punishing myself yes. of like health. And of course, we talk about like we're talking about this is a different kind of swing when you when I do yes. that, then of course, then my yes. body is like, what are you doing? Like are you have yes. what are, what are your taste buds there for? And right. <laughs> you know, and then I would make my way down and go get a pint of frozen custard in Wisconsin right. and I would eat it on the bus ride home. Like, you know, twelve hundred right. pounds and one not pounds, right. well calories. Twelve hundred calories, like yeah. You know, right. just like this crazy binge, you know, of yep. Right. Because I was de- denying myself, I wasn't exploring the yum. I didn't, I love cooking now, right? And it's just so amazing. Yeah. I make the most amazing smoothies. Yes. I'm happy to share recipes with anybody. Get a Vitamix or similar. It's like, because texture, right, is super yeah. important to yum. And it does that so well. And then salads, like we make such fantastic salads. And they're so healthy. But it's all about like in pursuit of the yum and the pursuit of like, well, how do I feel after this meal? Like yes. not just like in the moment, but yes, you know, like what what happens after that? Um, because there's certain things that are yum in the moment, like even this week, you know, okay, Trader Joe's, you got your new maple cookies out. Let's see what's going on. And then, <laughs> you know, those you don't make it more than an hour on the way home. I did make it you know all the way home but that's probably because I was on my bike otherwise it'd probably be like open in the car and you know I ate it and then I was like well that's not what my body needed you know and like this kind of learning about that yes but I think that goes back to the Buddhist the swing in the middle that's a little swing like okay that was tasty but I don't need a second one Mm -hmm. and rather than pursuing this solid path of never ever getting it wrong (laughs) i feel like health has become synonymous with some sort of perfectionistic solidity Mm -hmm. and our minds and our body i mean that's not a life i mean a a state that never changes is death yeah well yeah so Mm -hmm. Let's celebrate aliveness and celebrate aliveness in a way that we are not contributing to our own stress in ways that we we do legitimately have a choice. Yeah, that's a practice of, um, oh, I have choices here. Like, yeah. Like literally my life is filled with choices. Yes. And do I like the results that I'm getting? Yeah. Um, and that just loops back to or we're saying, okay, well, there's lots of things in life that we can't control and that we're um, influenced by. But what can I control? Okay, I can control my reaction to it or I can ch- change what I eat or I can, I have time, I'm going to do this walk. Can I engage my senses while I'm on this, you know, I still have to go to this place I'm going to wherever I'm walking to that still is happening. But can I see how many different flowers I can see? Can I hear yeah. as many things? Can I notice any? Oh my gosh, this the air is like I was running yesterday. And and it is these small things where I think I used to be a mouth breather when I ran even a year ago. And then I did the work of like, nope, I'm going to breathe in through my nose and out through my mouth. And I felt like I was suffocating. Like I had to really slow down for quite some time. But now I've trained myself that when I breathe, to breathe through my nose, and which, you know, can go either way, depending where you're running by. But I like I'm in the neighborhood. It's beautiful. And there was amazing aromatic roses, like kind of like an entire block that for so much of my life I would have missed out on just because of one presence and how I breath was breathing, but I had even had to pay attention to my breathing and that was a choice. So that, which is wild, like how many choices we have in a day. So true. I think another part of health that's a challenging in the moment, but worthwhile choice is to stop chasing the shiny objects. Mm, I like that. Tell me more. 
um, the when something is in pursuit of the outcome rather than the experience, mm. the the badge you earn, the weight you lose. Um, if that is the primary pursuit rather than one of many metrics, mm-hmm. again, we're we're never centering the ooh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when we s- decide that that my my own little internal experience of how it feels to me is is what matters. It's hard to earn lots of great. Um, likes and hearts and badges from the world, whether we're on social media, wherever we get those, um, the endorphin rush of approval from. Mm -hmm. When we, the moment we decide to make self-approval more important than other people's approval, there is a loss because we've been, yes, we have been trained to just like your mouth breathing and retraining yourself to breathe, breathe through your nose. There is a period of time where it feels more like a loss than a gain. But it's so worthwhile, just like just yeah. exactly as your breathing changes. It's it's sort of the psychological version of exactly what you described. I'm having this moment, and this is like this is our meetings, right? Like <laughs> when we meet every other week. But I'm just like oh, I'm in a therapy session with Rumi again, um, because I'm like, oh my gosh, like. And it's such a long journey. You're talking about, so I'm going to, I have a bunch of things in my head. I'm going to try to articulate it and bring them together. Um, Going back to, you're saying that corporate example you mentioned later was in your twenties. I don't think you're in your twenties anymore. Um, (laughs) A couple decades there of like experience of like this work. And we've been talking about all these small things that need to change, but what you're, I just feel like you're preaching to me, not at me, right? You're preaching. I'm just like, yes, it's not because this is like so relevant to my life right now in, but as we practice small things, we get towards bigger, bigger things. So I'm trying to do these things that I've been practicing for years, but now actually in terms of like how I structure my work, which even has to do with the the podcast being here and being back because like, yes, let's do it. And why? Because it, I love it because, you know, there is like that, Ooh, and like, Oh my gosh, I've never had a bad conversation when I do it. I always look for, you know, but the layers, the tentacles, I'm always a mixed metaphor gal. Like I have a hard time settling on a metaphor, like, like how far the roots or the poison or whatever, like goes into me is just like so wild. And it's just like this continuous work of like, Oh, hey there again. Uh, you know, but you re- but I recognize it so much earlier and easier and consistently. Like I know much more like what I'm dealing with and then it's but it's like okay, but this is like pretty intense, but even the small things back when, just like when your coworker said, yeah. "Oh, wow, you really know how to smell the f- flowers were arranging your, you know, that there was like this, oh my gosh, like somebody, somebody saw me, somebody is, is it okay to be me? Like, and then when I'm trying to be me on a bigger scale, I don't know. I, I, I almost think they feel just as hard. Um, but I, I don't know. It's mysterious. Let me just say that because I, because I also simultaneously feel like, oh my gosh, this is like, the hardest thing I've ever done. Right. Like I'm, and it's like, like terrifying, like as I get closer to these things of like, well, what, what do I want? Like, and even today I'm emails before our call and I have decisions to make. Is this how I'm going to spend my time? Like this, you know, I'll make some money doing this. Well, but I really would like to do this. And I'm trying to create time. Can I like, can I just fully jump into this thing or like, how can like how much can I let go of the lifeline or can I fully let go of the lifeline? So 
Thanks for the therapy session today. (laughs) My pleasure. (laughs) It always goes both ways. What's healing for you is healing Uh, for me. Yes, that reciprocity. Yes. Um, You've already been so forthright and uh, vulnerable within our time here. Like, what's uh, something that you're currently living or that, that you're living into? What's something that you're learning about? as it pertains to living your healthiest life. What does that look like for you right now? Um, What it looks like for me right now is letting people see me lead. Yes. Tell me more. I, uh, so the, the first, my first book that I mentioned um, when I discovered that, a tiny book of tiny collections of tiny stories. So some of our like five words long Mm -hmm. (laughs) could be a book. And it was a book, uh, essentially a list of the things that, that I don't want to forget that matter to me that Mm. essentially all the ooze that we were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. And when I looked at that, it had very little to do with the kind of accomplishments and shiny things and, um, the ways we prop ourselves up to be okay in the world. I I didn't want to keep that discovery to myself. Mm-hmm. I didn't even know quite not. I was like, wait a minute, there's a whole different way of orienting our lives. Mm-hmm. And I want to do this with people. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's taken me a couple of years to, to, of talking about it. Jen, I sort of warm up the idea to where I lead other people and writing their own first tiny books and um i'm currently and it it was to the point where i'm gonna wait till enough people ask me for it and then i'll run a a a group and and i will write my third book alongside them so that's what's unfolding right now and it's a it's health it is really healthy to open yourself up it's like breathing a little bit deeper into the diaphragm mm. <laughs> to open up your creative process, not just your product that you labored to, mm. to write and rewrite and polish and make perfect, but the all of the, <laughs> the guts and glory inside of it. Yeah. To lead the people through the creative process requires me, and because I'm also doing it alongside them for the first time, it's that it does feel like deep breathing deeper into the diaphragm. It's both exhilarating mm-hmm. and foreign mm-hmm. and deeply healthful. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's what it looks like to me. And and so far it's been a really beautiful experience and um, it'll continuing to breathe deeper into it yeah and expand who my willingness to be to be seen to make to call it a service and share it with the world that's that's how I'm living into my best health hmm. oh gosh Rumi um which is like you're just uh, laying it out you're you're walking the walk you're living it like of the when I think about yeah like what life's about like you know I I tend to think it's like be your true truest self and um allow other people to do the same like have a presence that invites other people to do the same and that's exactly what you're saying you're saying okay part of my true you have you know many facets of you of course and but you have this uh, part of you that writes and writes beautifully and um and has this practice of putting it out in these books and and in the form that feels most right and has felt okay it's tiny book okay maybe it's a uh you know this tiny page with you know tiny amount of words um but not tiny impact right uh um and that practice and then how people have witnessed you doing that. And then you're also talking to, you know, and we can use different words for it of 
like that listening, that voice, you know, is it, is it God? Is it the universe? Is it mm-hmm. spirit? Like in saying, okay, I'll do it when, you know, like there's like the, um, cause again, we have these options, like how we go through life. And I've really, I don't think I would have known about it, uh, without having moved to LA, but the, um, in not that I've taken part in this, but just being adjacent to show business and knowing people in it or like but stand up comedy and not that other people won't know about this. I'm just saying my experience, but the yes and of that non stand up comedy, but in um I'm blanking on the word. Improv. Improv, so improv yeah. is uh this yes and and that's what I'm hearing is like that you're gonna say yes to what presents it self and then you're gonna give your concert contribution so yes i will participate in what you're presenting to me and here's my little (laughs) addition here's my and so that you have this mandate you said right and okay i'm going to show up and i'm going to write steady and i'm learn how to do that regardless and okay i feel like i've got enough for a book and and then you encountered in the environment something that showed you like oh, these rules that I thought like what a book can be, like it kind of blew that out of the water and then opened mm-hmm. you up to, well, what's presenting itself? Okay, yes, and I'll do one book and I'll do two books. And then, oh, people are, you know, are, you know, however the, and I'm sure it came in so many ways of this knowing that, oh, I think I could, you know, offer this to other people or, you know, whether it's it started with people sit, you know, giving you feedback or whether it was this internal knowing or however it was of, oh, I could probably guide people through this process. I could be like this cheerleader and this coach. Um, and I can also, part of that can be me modeling of that. And I, to me, again, I just feel like that's like the truest, purest way to do it because you're bringing with it this vulnerability and I I just to me that's like the most powerful leadership is is not this top down but like is just really this community I always think of it like this intuitive it comes from I'm just going to live my life in a way and then that's going to empower other people and I'll invite people in as my capacity like increases and that's what I see you doing and it's just so like wildly beautiful to me and I'm you know, just uh, cheering you on and so excited because um, I know we got a we got some more weeks and months right before we get our end product right of this this program. of that book. But I do have a, another book that I want to shamelessly plug while yes, I'm here. Yes. Um, before I stepped into and did re- to leadership of leading individual authors through creating their own book, I got to lead as a. Um, editor the executive editor in an anthology and so i'm part of a a writer's community that was writing their very first anthology and i was tapped to lead that process and um that would that was the beginning of being seen leading that gave me the courage to step up into the the course that i'm developing so that book which is called what is love what is love what is love? 18 authors came together to tell their stories of how they responded to that prompt and what came up for them. They're all very true, lived, honest, beautiful stories from authors all over the world. Um, it's, and um, it, the whole project is a benefit for amplifying voices that aren't heard mm-hmm. or easily suppressed. Mm -hmm. and so I am so excited and proud that this book is coming out in October October okay yes in October and you can look at uh, the the website for this book is whatislove.org and you can go see there's a beautiful author profiles and a little bit about the book and so for anyone who feels like their whether it's writing is their dream or whatever their step is that this will be an encouraging book to realize that we we live in a world where love is 
far more abundant than we think it is. Again, if we're willing to pause at the ooh, mm-hmm. that's so tiny, we might have overlooked mm-hmm. it. Yes. Um, and that's what this project reminded me of. And when people come together to gather their ooze, that's a, this is not, by the way, part of any part of the official, um, I, I had someone put key talking points together and she did not say ooh. So <laughs> that's just me editorializing. Um, <laughs> so that's right. That's how editor, I feel about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a beautiful book. I'm so proud of it. So that's coming out very soon. Cool. I can't wait to read it. We'll definitely um, I put that in the show notes for Thank people you. to access that. Um, yeah. I didn't even, I'm not remembering that being the title, which I'm like, sign me up. I want to read that because I think that question yes, is, that should be, yes. I, it's hard for me to imagine people haven't thought of that, but um, like, what is, maybe not, but when I think about, yeah, living a healthy life, to me, that's like in yes. there. Right. Oh, absolutely. When you're thinking about relationships right. and how you relate to the world, like what is yes. actually I had an experience in Santa Fe, not on our trip, but the there's a um uh a Franciscan um cathedral there, church there, mm-hmm. and they have a labyrinth. And um I had passed through there like a year and a half before our meeting in Santa Fe and came across that labyrinth and I had been wanting to experience labyrinths, but they're not like everywhere. (laughs) So, and that was with what I was going through in my life at that time, that was the question. It was like, what is love? And then again, as you talk to, again, whatever you want to call it, uh, you know, God, the universe, spirit, or um, our inner knowing, our conscience. Like when I went in, was what is love? And then by the time I came out, there was like, I had this knowing of that, which is very, very well. So I can't wait to hear these stories. And you're a contributor to that as well, right? We'll get to hear. I, my story is folded into the introduction to the book. So I do okay. have a personal story in there, but it's folded okay. into the introduction. Okay. So, okay. yes. Okay. Um, we have one more question to bring us home yes. today. Um, I think we've touched on it already, but what is something you wish people knew more about living their healthiest life? So much of life is how we relate to what happened to us. There's the things that happened to us, and then there's how we relate to it. Mm-hmm. And when when we relate to ourselves with kindness, mm-hmm. we set the foundation for thriving. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So much. I was trying to I was trying to mirror it back, but I'm like again, just like kind of. I guess I'm having emotions about it that I'm just experiencing, which is kind of yeah, <laughs> uh, shutting down because it's like a, just like a being hit with like a, a profound truth, right? That um, in the words that we, in the way that words do, um, when used in a certain way or when they're um, inspired, they can kind of bypass <laughs> that part of your brain that's maybe even like a memory and just like you you feel it in your body um wow yeah like how we it's it's kind of like the um sounds like you're saying like the story there's what happened and then there's a story about what we say about what happened mm-hmm. uh, which I think we can all think of times in our own lives or we've seen maybe even people's lives that are really like marked by, you know, they've claimed this identity. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I had a an experience recently where someone had um, drawn a conclusion about something I'd said. Mm-hmm. in a way that was 
shocking and hurtful to me. Mm -hmm. And in the past, I would have pursued trying to change that person's mind or setting them straight to feel okay, Mm -hmm. to restore a sense of equilibrium and health. Mm -hmm. And I realized that the opportunity here really is to get curious, like what's, what's happening here? Mm. Oh, this part of my stomach hurts. My Mm. palms are sweaty. I feel like I'm seven years old again. Mm. And before, rather than go right into trying to fix the situation to be right, Mm. to when we talk about self care, I think this is the piece that's missing. It's not about the bubble baths, but actually caring for what is happening to me in this moment, to mm-hmm. showing the experience some care before rushing off mm-hmm. to control the situation you can't control. Mm-hmm. And not moreover, this person gets to believe whatever they believe ultimately. I don't. I don't have, I may not like it and Mm -hmm. it's not, it's neither of our businesses for her to like how, how she feels about something I did or said, or even to get it right. Mm -hmm. And so um, rather than making it about trying to get this person to change their opinion of me or what I said, and it changed the dynamic and ultimately mm. the conflict wasn't resolved, but I felt resolved. Mm. The, and the grief at the end was clean. Mm-hmm. And that's healthy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we tend to store these experiences. This keeps happening to me. Remember when so-and-so did this? Mm-hmm. Why do I why do I accumulate conflict everywhere I go when I'm trying so hard to be good? <laughs> and so this is the opposite, right? The compounding story of yeah. your misery and effectualness and how it can never be right. And I'm constantly under threat. And yeah. So I think our nervous systems constantly be under threat is one of the biggest damages to our health and in some tiny little way Mm -hmm. I'm trying to shift where I place my attention to what's happening right here Mm -hmm. and when all was said and done it felt revolutionary right that's what I'm, uh, that, uh, again, there's just so many things like happening inside me that I'm like, okay, I'm on a podcast, start talking, but, um, <laughs> but I'm having this experience relating to what you're saying to your experience and then identifying with my own experience and thinking of how this is true and how that manifests in the times when I am more present to myself, which feels new, I think, to um, pay attention to the sensations in my body. I think even in the last few years for me with my, like, I don't feel like I was taught how to um, experience emotions nor deal with them. And so conflict was and is a mess. I think I'm getting better, but I think there's still the just not always knowing what's happening in me and feeling the the emotions in that and the strength of them, they drive action or inaction, depending on, you know, there can be like this retreat withdrawing, which is an action, right? Um versus oh I'm going to say something or I'm going to show them or I'm going to you know race around and you know start slamming things or stop noticing the people next to me you know and get into like a tizzy um or 
just be like, well, I can't control it. Oh, I'm going to start cleaning the house, you know, like <laughs> versus just the, or, or go right to the bubble bath or something that's soothing, you know, like I, I do, if I go back to like my all brand and plain yogurt at that time, I think a lot of that was like a, um, I'm comforting myself at times and then I'm feeling bad about the comfort because my chosen comfort is like to indulge in more of something that is very satisfying to my mouth, right? That um, didn't make me feel good physically later or emotionally or mentally later, but like, and I've noticed that even that I had done a lot of work to, I would say not really have disordered eating. If I was to tell a story about, you know, my last two decades, but there's been some things going on recently and I've noticed myself seeking comfort in that way. And I also saw myself give myself permission to do that. Mm -hmm. Like, because yeah, there's a lot of things you can't control right now. And here's some ways you can, you can down regulate, but you know, be moderation, like let's not, but also like, okay, maybe there is a day where you're going to, um, uh, eat more, indulge more things. And that, but that's kind of like, we have it even in our ver vernacular, like a comfort food that there is like these things that have this yes. meaning that, and a lot of it, and I think maybe other people understood it it's in there in the word but like a lot of that there is like a, a neurophysiological connection to why I for those of you who are watching a video I have a little bag of Haribo 